Today in Pro Art, a look back at the premiere of the Ukrainian film My Grandmother Fanny Kaplan, a film who asked many questions. What's the truth behind Fanny Kaplan's failed attempt to kill Lenin? What was the exact nature of the relationship between the young woman and the proletariat leader? And how good is the proletariat leader in Ukrainian? Pro Art was there to answer all these questions. Every seat was booked from the premiere of the film at Kivian Rus Theatre. The crowd was impatient to have a first glimpse of My Grandmother Fanny Kaplan, one of the most significant films by the new Ukrainian cinema. This movie means a lot for the creator's crew. Ukrainian cinema is coming back. We had not less than 30 film premiere in Ukraine in 2016. It's huge. A new generation of filmmakers, writers and cameramen is uprising in Ukraine. And a growing number of Ukrainian films is being released. Experts say this could mean the revival of Ukrainian film industry. Over 70 pictures are expected to be released in 2017. This is good news for those who look forward to Ukrainian premiere. As more and more Ukrainian movies are to be released every year, the audience expects them to be better. Ukrainian cinema has a real soul and it's great to see it coming back. It's great news. The revival of a good cultural scene is a good sign. It is impossible to have a prosperous state without good cinema. We suddenly are under the spotlights. The world is finally interested in us, which means we can make any kind of film, even the hardest one. Box office is the best indicator of movies industry revival. If the figures are still good after the first weekend, this revival is really happening. It's amazing to see posters of the film Assassin's Creed and My Grandmother Fanny Kaplan on the same wall. It shows these pictures are on the same level and that Ukrainian film industry is actually reaching international standards. This film wouldn't exist without the support of State Committee for Cinematography. Director of the film, Alyona Demyanenko, started to shoot the film in 2013, before Euromaidan. They were planning to shoot in Russia and in Crimea. They eventually found another solution. They shot Siberian scenes in Kiev's winter and Crimean ones in Odessa, and they managed to do it. The shooting had already started when Euromaidan happened. Due to the Maidan, the film has reached a level of truth no one would have imagined. I'm sure the audience will be aware of this while watching it. So many people came at the premiere. I guess they're curious to see a Ukrainian film. It's quite a significant event. I hope this movie will echo the situation in Ukraine today and maybe help understand it better. This is only the beginning. We have to keep doing it. We have to work harder. We can't stop now. It's only by trying over and over again that we'll reach our goal, better film, for a satisfied audience. It is without any doubt the best Ukrainian film we did in 2016. My grandmother Fanny Kaplan shed lights on Fanny Kaplan's tragic life. She was a famous revolutionary of Russian Empire who tried to kill Lenin. The history setup is more of an excuse for deeper questions. It's a heart-touching story about a woman whose passion is crushed by the march of history. And the heroine could be you and me. She's like everybody, taking her dreams for reality. The risk of focusing the plots around Fanny Kaplan and Lenin was a big one. The film crew chose a controversial subject and decided to go against the popular belief in Soviet history. Whether we like it or not, Lenin is part of our history. As a country and for my generation, our childhood. Then everything changed and things are changing even faster now. It's in front of us, we're in it. Still, Fanny Kaplan could be our grandmother. What would she say today? 
Alyona Demyonenko consider there is no idea worth sacrificing your life for. For her, a civilized society shouldn't allow that. One's life can't be put at stake for a matter of ideas, personal views or ambition. Government has to ensure every person's right to live her life the way she wants. The only equality I recognize is the equality before the law. This is a love story, a fable, about passion. It's mostly about a young woman's intimate life. She shouldn't have met Lenin. She shouldn't have played a part in this sad history. Because of historians, Fanny Kaplan became a symbol in anti-Soviet mythology. That's why people know so little about her. The only sure information we have is that she was arrested after Lenin's assassination attempt. Fanny Kaplan was executed a few days after. But if you look deeper, you can discover pieces of concealed truth behind the myth. Fanny Kaplan was born in Volin, in today's western Ukraine. She was sentenced to forced labor at first failed attempt to assassinate General Governor of Kiev. Press was already treating her like a monster after that, calling her, I quote, a typical Ukrainian nationalist Jew. Dmitry Tomasz Polski, co-author and film producer, consider it's the best time to rehabilitate Fanny Kaplan. He claims she was not involved in Lenin's assassination attempt. His idea was to explain what led the Soviets to build this image of her. Because there was something of great importance behind the well-known story. A simple sentence is enough to sum up the main idea of the film. It says, the historical truth is made of the dead silence. We wanted to show the power of political manipulation. That kind of thing existed for centuries. The real point of the film is to show how you create a myth. The film director decided the role could only suit a beginner. Only a young actress could play the role of an unfortunate abused woman. Katerina Molchanova was the lucky one. The Odyssey actress went through a lot of work for this role. <laughs> I think the movie will push people to study. It is a crucial part of our history. The film will draw attention from the curious ones, the ones who are ready to look for another angle. But it's not indispensable. It's also a story of humanity after all. The film's crew portrayed Vladimir Lenin in their own way. They studied piles of materials, photos and Lenin's work. Russian actor Alexei Devochenko embodies a really peculiar Lenin. <laughs> Devochenko's Lenin only appears in a couple of scenes. But I'm deeply grateful to Alexei for his wonderful portraits, even for a few scenes. Authors tried to create an image taking into consideration the last photos of Lenin. That was the way the crew saw Lenin. And that is why Alexei Devochenko had to play him. It was funny when border guards asked me about the purpose of my visit in Ukraine. I had to tell them I was invited to play in a movie. I needed a special accreditation to take part in a shooting. And the young border guard asked me, who is Fanny Kaplan? I said she was an historic figure. He asked me about my role and I answered Lenin. Do you know your line? He said. Of course, I said. And then he let me go. So I would recommend any actor working in Ukraine to know their line in the case of problems at the border. Oh, and I would add one more thing. Glory to Ukraine. Unfortunately, Alexei passed away before the end of the shooting, but the crew managed to keep his memory alive through the film. Writers were also concerned about young generation's ignorance on Fanny Kaplan, especially in this historical background. 
What happened long ago can hardly interest future generation. But a big question remains. What's a single human life worth in the eyes of the history? Before all, the film is a love story. It could be a problem to have Lenin as a character in Fanny Kaplan's life. But people are supposed to know history. That's why we chose to focus on the love story rather than history. The question is how to show it. I'm mostly interested in the end of the history. Our generation is used to see Fanny Kaplan as a monster, and this film might change the idea. Fanny Kaplan had a chaotic life, and the writers did the plot taking this fact into account. The film crew recounted the way they put it as their own interpretation. The real challenge was to develop the scenario from scratch. Ten Page disappeared from her trial report. Ten Page probably too dangerous for the authorities. Katerina Molchanova constantly asked me if Fanny Kaplan tried to shoot Lenin or not. My only answer was that I wasn't there to witness. Everybody comes to see the film for their own reason, but I'm sure many will try to know if she shot him or not. And the director chose to treat it as a mystery. The choice is left to the viewer whether she's guilty or not. Little is shown about the act in itself in order to focus on the deepest meanings of Fanny Kaplan's life. Yakov Mikhailovich, mene ось що бентежить. Під час арешту в неї в руках був портфель і парасолька. Як вона тоді стріляла? It's only after careful examination of her personal things that truth could be unveiled. Fanny Kaplan was everything but simple. After being attracted to the revolutionary Garsky, she had an affair with Lenin's younger brother, Dmitry Ulyanov. The famous film director Miroslav Slaboshpitsky was chosen for this role. The actor is a celebrity. He was awarded the best acting at Odessa Film Festival. <laughs> In this film, I am Dmitry Ulyanov. I am the complete opposite of this role. I play a 40-year-old man falling in love with a young girl. This love might be his last, and a fatal one. The woman he's in love with, Fanny Kaplan, is then arrested for shooting his own sibling, Vladimir Ulyanov Lenin. What's important is what happened before the act, the process of the tragedy. Alchemy happens when he cures her and finally becomes fond of Fanny. The film storyline takes place in two eras, in the early 20th century and in the present days. I am sure she did not kill him. The October Revolution of 1917 overwhelms her private life and finally crushes her. The point of the film writers is about contemporary questions, mostly on myth and propaganda. How are myths processed in people's mind? Why are they so blindly accepted? What's at stake here is the concept of brainwashing. The sister of Ukrainian film director Oleg Sensov put a lot of thoughts about it. It's interesting to see how political prisoners were treated during those days. Political prisoners had better detention conditions in the early 20th century than today. They were not subjected to torture, and at least they were allowed to correspond with their family members. It's not the case anymore. The current situation with prisoners is worse today. It confirms my point of view. There are no heroes, only circumstances. The film My Grandmother Fanny Kaplan was also screened abroad. The picture has won prestigious award at international festival. The Odessa Film Festival awarded it for Best Male Performance and it was also Best Foreign Film at Crystal Palace International Film Festival. The movie even opened the whole ceremony. 
I presented our film in a German festival. It was interesting to see the public's reaction. It's a great feeling when your work goes directly to the heart of the audience. Some of the screenings were only for professionals, like in Hungary, for example. Even London Market was interested. These are people just involved in cinema. They breathe it, they live by it, and they love it. Но это просто люди, которые, ну, как бы существуют в кинопроцессе, живут кино, смотрят кино. This story is supposed to have different meaning for any generation, present, past and future. Prestigious awards are really important for film director, but in the end, it's all about the public. The film has to attract viewers so they can judge by themselves and draw the right conclusions.